Ladies and gentlemen, the Doomsteef Audio Fiction Magazine presents The Thirteen Nights of Halloween with Rish Outfield and Big English. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. This is Rish Outfield. I, I don't know that we're calling this That Gets My Goat, are we? I think Well, it's part of That Gets My Goat, right? Is it? I don't know what we decided. I thought it was too cool for That Gets My Goat. <laughs> You're too cool for That Gets My Goat. No? Okay. Uh, well, I was, <laughs> I, I was going to call it The 13 Days of Halloween... But, you know, it might be better to be the 13 nights of Halloween. Because you and I haven't recorded during the day in an, at least a year. And it gets dark in October and, you know, the Kardashians come out of their crypts at night. You know, it's just it's a scarier time. I hear you. I hear you. So the 13 nights of Christmas. I mean, sorry. Kwanzaa. <laughs> the 13 nights of Halloween we're calling this. Okay, so this is like a Dupo Remo kind of a thing where it's on That Gets My Goat, but it's separate from That Gets My Goat. We are uh, having an experiment here just to see if people find it fun and interesting. A episode for the 13 days leading up to and of Halloween. Yeah, and because we're doing them right now, we have no idea of whether the experiment works or not or whether people liked it or not. Oh, they hated it. We we have the idea already. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty standard. Uh, well, why are we wasting our time then? As a matter of fact, a hate letter just popped up in the email. Hey, here, let me read it to you. It says, Dear Steve guys. Okay. I realize you haven't actually recorded the 13 days of Halloween yet, but I already hate it. You guys suck. You suck big... Harry Wong. Hey, you Harry Wong was the valedictorian <laughs> of my high school class, and he... Yeah, right. apparently we... Well, we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. It's off to a good start. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some topics, some fear-inducing topics, some frightening topics, perhaps. We're going to try and discuss... Some things that make you scared or make you creeped out or whatever. I don't know. Maybe one of the topics will be more scary stuff in literature or film or... Uh, yeah. I don't I, know. Just as long as it's in keeping with the Halloween spirit, I think. So that's pretty broad. Yeah. 13 Halloween related topics. So to start with, <clears throat> I was going to tell you a story. It happened to me just the other day. I was driving home from the gas station. Now, at my house, I live on this road, and it's, it's, a, it's a road divided. There's the two sides. There's east and west of my road, okay? Now, I don't know why they did this, but my road, it starts out way over on the other side where it was uh, where they first started developing the neighborhood, and it goes along, and it goes up to a certain point, and then it just stops, and it becomes a dirt road, and then you go over the dirt road for a little while, and then it starts back up, and then you're on the other half, and that's where I live, is on that other half of the road. So a lot of the stuff in town is all closest to me if I go that dirt road, because you just take that dirt road, and I can get right to the gas station and, and the big park where all the soccer games are at and all that kind of stuff. So I go over this road quite a lot, which probably hell on the bottom of my car probably all the oil leaks and so forth that i get come from that but that's just beside the point i went to the gas station i was driving back from the gas station over this dirt road and it's you know desertous mountains on either side of me i'm driving along and i see this big black thing in the road i get a little closer and i notice this big black thing is moving get a little closer and I see this big black thing that's crossing the road is a tarantula. Now, I was pretty excited about this. I've never seen a wild tarantula just out roaming about. 
at least not in North America. I did see it in South America one time, but uh, it, it, you always see the domesticated tarantulas that have been, you know, they're, they're guarding junkyards. Right. They're in pageants. The Paris Hiltons have them in their purses. Right. Yeah. Mostly the purse spiders. So yeah, I saw this spider. It was in the road, and I thought, dude, this is awesome. It's this wild tarantula. I got it take this home and show it to my kids and so I hopped out of the car and I was looking around trying to find something that I could catch this tarantula with you know so I could transport it home with me because I wasn't just going to pick the dang thing up I don't know you know I've heard that tarantulas will not bite a person or do not bite people or cannot bite people I'm not sure what exactly the deal is I've heard that but it doesn't help me to get over the fact that this is a gigantic spider that I have to pick up. So I looked around and I found somebody had discarded a big gulp cup. And so I grabbed that big gulp cup and I herded the spider into the big gulp cup, put it in my car, and drove it home to show to my family. My wife opened the door and saw it and screamed and said, don't you dare bring that thing any closer to the house than that. My kids, I was kind of sad. They were a little more timid than I'd hoped. I'd hoped they'd at least come close to it and look at it and get a good look at it. But I think they were all of the same mind as I was. You know, they don't want to touch it. They don't want to pick it up because they've... It's a scary spider. It's huge. It's like the size of your hand. And so grabbing a tarantula or picking or even getting close to it is just a little freaky. So they, they kind of looked at it, but they didn't get that close. I did get a little bit closer than they did. I got my camera out and I took some pictures, which were terrible. The flash overexposed all of them on me for some reason. But uh, I got some pictures of it and then I was looking at this thing and this, this a tarantula is the most monstrous looking beast in the frigging world. Now, that's me just making a statement. It's not necessarily a fact. Somebody could probably bring up a more monstrous beast to me, and maybe I'd agree with them, but I don't know. Well, Snooky from the Jersey Shore, I think, is a good runner-up. Yeah, probably runner-up. I think still, okay, I don't know if you've ever seen, have you seen a, you've seen a, like a live tarantula. You've been like within sure touching distance of one before, right? Yeah. Okay, so they have eight legs, right? They do. Then they have, on the very front of them, they have these kind of like feeler arm-looking things or that maybe they're mandibles, mandibles or, or whatever that they use to... So those, on top of that, other little arm kind of things. But then, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they have like these feeler arm thingies on their butt? Yes. You s oh my gosh, I've never seen those before, but this I, I'd set it down on my lawn and the spider was like crawling over the grass and these little feelery arm things were like reaching around and I don't know what they're what they're for do you have any idea what they're for what they do they're just evil maybe it's for egg laying maybe it's for mating maybe it's so that predators will go for the butt thinking that's the head <laughs> is that really going to help though I mean, maybe that. Well, it works for butterflies and stuff. You know, they. Well, once they lose their butt, are they going to be able to continue living? I, well, they're they're tough creatures. I I don't know. They they, they can survive <laughs> without a butt, but they can't survive without a head. Well, yeah, I guess there's more likelihood, at least, that they can survive without a butt than a head. But oh my gosh, these things that they had on them were so unbelievably creepy. And worse yet, after that, I had to herd the spider back into the big gulp cup to take it back up the hill and leave it up on the dirt road. And a big gulp cup is not very big, right? I mean, a, a tarantula is not going to have a good time fitting in a big gulp cup. When it gets down to the bottom of the cup, the base of a, of a cup is probably the same size as just the body of the spider, not including the legs, right? So this spider goes down into the cup and I set it there and I set it next to me and I swear that it had put all of its eight legs out and was steadily like climbing, scaling the cup. It's like, I, I remember when I was younger, we were at this one building where it had like a hallway that was fairly small and we thought it was cool to put our feet over onto one side on the wall and then our hands over onto the other side and like scale up the wall like that. I think that's what the spider was trying to do and he was going to get out and he was going to kill me. 
it's good. I don't know, man. Do, the spiders don't like freak you out very much, do they? Uh, tarantulas don't. I don't really have a a spider phobia for some reason. I, I black widows are the only ones that really bother me. And but yeah, I, I caught a tarantula just and took it to school and and get it to my science class and. My science teacher put it on his necktie and it just stood there or what do you call it? It held on while he was teaching the class and it wasn't until it moved that a couple people realized that he had a live tarantula on him. But yeah, I believe he said the same thing too, is they won't bite and I don't think I was brave enough to let it crawl on me, but I I don't shiver at the thought of them like you do. Okay. I I think I've found the name, what these uh, things on their butt are. Okay. See, it's they're called petty palpi. That sounds like foot feel. Yeah, something like that. Two six segmented appendages connected to the thorax near the mouth, protruding on either. Maybe not. No, that can't be them, because that's not on the mouth, on the thorax. It's on the freaking butt. Darn, I was wrong. Okay, let me. I'll I'll, I'll keep seeing if I can figure out what these things are. But uh, anyways, so I thought it might be interesting, since I had a close encounter, if we could talk a little about spiders and maybe why they freak us out so much, why they induce so much fear and are used so well. Now, I was thinking, I I remember one time I've seen a thing where they they would talk about what spiders do to kill their prey. Then at the end of it, they said, you know, so that's what a spider does. Sure is a good thing that spiders are as small as they are, isn't it? Just imagine what it would be like if they were the size of a horse. That idea, it's weird because you you would think that idea would make for really scary stuff. And I guess sometimes it could and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know, there's that movie, Eight-Legged Freaks. Which you've seen? No, I haven't seen it. Actually, the the, the film just looked too ridiculous to me. For some reason. And that's the thing that I was just thinking. Like the idea of a spider the size of a horse or something like that should be absolutely terrifying. But instead it just seemed utterly ridiculous. It's scarier that a spider is small than a spider is huge. In a movie you'd be more afraid of a a small spider crawling on someone's bed than a giant spider crawling on someone's house. Something like that. Yeah, I think, I mean, Arachnophobia, that was a terrifying film. There's something about the spider, you know, like you said, a a small spider is scarier than a big spider because it can get in there unseen and do its damage. And it seems like scares in movies uh, and even probably in books and stuff like that, they come from the anticipation of the bad thing happening. So when you see a little spider go crawling onto like into somebody's bed sheets as they're, you know, completely unaware and they're just tossing and turning and they're rolling around and the spider keeps coming closer to their arm and then it crawls up their arm and they still toss and turn and that little Brady Bunch sound effect it plays. Finally, you know, something happens or maybe nothing happens. Maybe they finally fling it and the spider flies off of their arm and goes out the window or something. But you get totally freaked out the whole time as you wait for what's going to happen with this little spider. I remember the part that scared me the most about arachnophobia is when the guy is at the football practice and the spider like crawls inside of his helmet and then he puts his helmet on and he runs out there to play and then all of a sudden, Bleh! he just drops dead or whatever. Man, just that idea. You know, we used to do that to people during football practice, too. I remember doing that to somebody. I picked a weed from out of the grass, and then I went up behind this guy, and I spun the weed really fast in his ear hole, (laughs) and he freaked out. He, like, ripped his helmet off really fast, and he's, like, swatting at his ear, and he's like, there was a bee in my helmet, man. (laughs) I thought it was pretty funny. But, yeah, the the idea of a gigantic spider doesn't seem as scary because it's just overwhelming odds maybe or it's just there you're walking along and then it just comes out and it eats you alive or whatever well is it the fact that there are no giant spiders that makes that not scary to you it could 
it could be. Like I, I did some reading about spiders just for fun. And it says that uh, a single spider in your house will eat up to 2,000 bugs in a year. Wow. And I just thought, holy cow, how hungry must a spider be? So if you got a spider that's the size of a St. Bernard. (laughs) How many St. Bernards would be eaten by it? (laughs) Well, I was thinking of you and your children. But yes, let's let's take the high road and say St. (laughs) Bernard. Yeah, 2,000 bugs? You know, that's kind of crazy, but that also makes me want to have spiders in my house. (laughs) Well, yeah, because you've got all sorts of insects that get in your house all the time, right? Yeah, we're being overrun by flies right now. I mean, it happens every autumn. Every autumn we get just flies out the yin-yang. I can see one right now walking across over by my sink. I should get up and get the fly swatter and kill it now. I've already killed about 10 since I came home from work today. They're just, it's an inexhaustible supply. I don't know how there are so many. It's like a bunch of flies came into our house, had themselves gigantic orgy laid in million eggs, and those eggs just keep hatching and keep hatching daily because there's just way more than can be accounted for for anything else unless there's just like a swarm of them and they just like line out the outside edges of the doors and so every time you open a door like 50 of them can fly in because uh it's just out of control but i've never seen a spider i mean i guess i have seen spiders with flies in their webs but flies are annoying enough that you want them killed off faster i think i need a a a bat in my house instead (laughs) That might be dirtier in the long run, though. (laughs) But the guano could be good for uh, other stuff. Your children will have such shiny hair. Yeah, there you go. I think you can power, like, certain vehicles from more green cultures than our own using bat guano. Makes great biodiesel. Ah. No, I have no idea. (laughs) uh, Maybe the fact that there are no spiders that are that large makes it... A little ridiculous. Nah, that's just silly. And so you can't get scared of it. Well, hey, let's talk about Shelob. Okay. From Return of the King. So that was patterned after a real spider that lives in New Zealand. That really is that large? Uh, How afraid of Shelob were you? I was never really all that afraid of Shelob, to tell you the truth. Because she's obviously a special effect? Or because of what we talked about with just like the giant spider... Being less scary than the little spider? It could be that. Although that's not always the case. Um, I remember uh, Harry Potter 2, was it? Yes. Where they had the just massive numbers of giant spiders. You know, he goes into the forest and then they meet the most giantest of all the giant spiders. And then all his children are like, okay, now we're going to eat you. And they come chasing them. And I found that to be scary. My wife found it to be absolutely terrifying. She was so freaked out by these spiders. Yeah, I I believe she stood up and started screaming at the parents for allowing their children to see this movie. Yeah, she said, shame on all of you. So that was, although I I probably wasn't nearly as scared as she was. I think maybe she has more of a spider fear than me. Obviously she does because she wouldn't even come out and look at the tarantula that I brought home and I put the tarantula in a cup and brought it home so obviously uh, she has much more of a fear than I do I think maybe a real spider is much more scary and that's one thing you know the the spiders in that arachnophobia movie were all real spiders uh, there was no CG in those days it was either use a real spider or do some kind of stop motion thing or something, which, gosh, that would have been absolutely horrible. Try and keep track of all those legs in the stop motion. You don't think uh, puppetry would be a better way to go than stop motion? I suppose maybe. I don't really know. I'm not uh, very good with special effects. So if there was somebody that was, then they could tell us. But either way, it, it just seems like the real spiders is the way to go as far as that goes it makes them seem much more scary and maybe that's just the way it always is the most of the most successful scary movies are about just a guy who goes crazy and kills people 
much more so than about a alien that kills people or i mean you know there are a few alien that kills people type movies or franchises i should say but you know friday the 13th and halloween and freddy krueger and etc cetera, etc cetera, they're all guys that are the things that you're afraid of they're all just kind of real people although not real because you know they can't be killed or whatever whereas predator or alien or whatever is a much smaller franchise although that could just be because it costs so much more to make that it's harder to make money off of them i don't know but maybe that is uh, true something that can be real is more scary than something that that can't a a friend of mine just saw cabin in the woods this weekend and he was talking about it and the two of them were saying that they really appreciated the unicorn (laughs) that comes out (laughs) and kills and i just thought did you remember the unicorn i did yeah i remember the unicorn i remember thinking when we saw the film well a unicorn i don't know why but that just doesn't work (laughs) it's not a scary thing even though it can just run you through with that horn it just doesn't scare you for some reason but I think it was meant to be a laugh. Yeah, probably. We were seeing all this mayhem and all this horrible stuff. Oh, spoiler alert, by the way. And then you see this unicorn and there's somebody running from it. And you're just like, why? It's Look at it. It's And then it stabs the guy and you're like, oh. Yeah, it's just funny. And they do that with several other things like the merman, for example, which seems very, very harmless when it kills the guy that it kills. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm sorry. Since we've spoiled Cabin in the Woods completely, of all of those threats in Cabin in the Woods, which was the most scary to you? Uh... Because that's like a smorgasbord, a greatest hits of horror classics and, you know, now and then sort of thing. Right. Yeah, they kind of just went and plundered every scary movie through history of scary movies and... Either just put an exact version, you know, when it's a zombie, it's a zombie and that doesn't really matter. You don't have to make it your own. But like they had other things like a pinhead kind of guy from uh, shoot. Journey of Natty Gang. Oh, Hellraiser. The guy from Hellraiser, you know, they had to change him up a little. So they made him have like saw blades in his head instead of little pins sticking out of his head. But uh, what was my most scary, scared thing in that? I don't know. It's been a while since you saw it, so maybe you can't. Yeah, it has. It's been several months, so I'm trying to think of which ones were the worst. There were some really creepy ones, you know, like the ones that had the doll masks on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Creepy dolls are creepy, after all, (laughs) because their eyes will follow you. Do you remember there was a little girl dressed as a ballerina that had her back to them, and when she turned, instead of a face, she just had a mouth. I do remember that. That to me is disturbing, partially because of my fear of, you know, the little girl. I I don't know. We didn't I don't think we got to see her kill anybody or anything like that. But yeah, there was just something so horrible about the ballerina idea to me. And, And there were the two twin girls that we only see for like a split second. But to me, there that's the one that I was most afraid of, the two twin girls. Yeah, the mouth, the, the, the whole face was just a mouth. It was like a gigantic, it was spiraling kind of mouth, wasn't it, on that one? Yeah. That was one that they actually mentioned when we were just talking about. We talked about that today, for that matter, strangely. That was pretty creepy. I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to pick what's the scariest thing. Okay, well, maybe it was a bad question. Well, it's also been a while since you yeah, saw Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem. If I'd just seen it the other day, I could go through them a lot better in my head and say, this one, that uh, really creepy pinhead dude with the blades in his head, he was pretty scary. Yes, Fornicus, I believe his name was. <laughs> right, I remember that. We stayed and saw his name on the credits. Yeah, he was really creepy. Just the way he just sat there and watched and never spoke and didn't... Yeah, he didn't do anything, did he? He was just still. Yeah, it was just something really creepy about that. Yeah, I don't know. How long are we planning on making these uh, bits? We can go as long or short as you want. There was a spider in one of those. Oh, right. A great big tarantula, in fact. Yeah. And I believe Bradley Whitford kills the tarantula with uh, like an Uzi. I know this because I saw it yesterday. So, you know, just... You did? How about that? So... Do you not remember there being a spider? 
I do. I, I vaguely remember that. I, I and I figured there had to be one too. I mean, how could there not be? That's interesting. So you saw it yesterday. What What is the thing that most scares you? Oh, I told you the the twins. The twins. I mean, it, it, it's it's got to be the child thing for me then, because <laughs> also do you remember there's the the backwoods hillbilly zombie torture family, uh-huh. the, the, which is the main antagonist right of the film right and they've got the girl the little girl that wrote in the journal Mm -hmm. and she's missing an arm and yeah just every time they showed her there was something really ghastly and also kind of sad about that monster to me Uh uh-huh and you know again it goes back to my child phobia i suppose but that all three the three that were most scary to me were all children (laughs) Yes, years of counseling it's going to take, I guess, <laughs> to get me over that. And then you're going to have a child of your own, and you'll be like, oh, crap, it scares the crap out of me all the time. Ah, he's like laying there and crying. I don't know if he's really asleep or if he's just pretending. <laughs> oh, can't wait for that day to come. That'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So have we exhausted what you wanted to talk about with spiders? Well, you know, I don't want to go on for too long because these are supposed to be once a day. So we can't do our normal half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour Which and a I'm half. Which I'm sure we've done. So uh, I figure we probably ought to cut it short here and yeah. finish it up. One last little bit about spiders. An interesting fact about spiders is that um, spiders came from... Ancient Greece, as almost everything did, there was a weaver named Arachne who was famous for her weaving skills. She was so famous that the goddess Athena became jealous of her and the attention that Arachne's weaving garnered. And as punishment, she turned her into a spider, the first spider. Ah. And so we still say arachnids to this day for the family of spiders that Athena brought us, you oh. know, so praise be to Athena yes. if you like spiders. And, you know, her blame is pretty obvious if you don't. Yeah, it's all Athena's fault. I should have guessed that. All right. Well, I guess that's it then. I uh, hope you enjoyed this day of the 13 nights of Halloween. All right. Yes. And if you didn't enjoy it, there's more to come tomorrow. That's right. Maybe you'll enjoy that one. Don't just decide, hey, I didn't enjoy this. I won't listen anymore because the next one might be the one that you enjoy. So keep listening. (laughs) See you later, folks. All right. Good night. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it.